Hey, hi guys, this is uh, Faiket Luari speaking from Uncensored Truth channel and uh, tonight is something very interesting. I'm inspired to talk about husband and wife relationships and how important is husband and wife relationship and what's interesting about this sharing today is I'm taking the story from the Bible and the story is Job story and i know i know i know you said hey what what job got to do with wives and you know wife and all these people always refer to job book of the bible as you know the guy who doing so well one of the richest guy and then then suddenly uh, god and satan had this conversation and then uh, god said you know i know everybody down there is like you know in a mess telling satan but you know have you considered my servant job you know he's upright it says what uh, have you considered my servant job there is no one on earth like him is blameless, upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Now, and this is how Satan replies God, right? Very quickly. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, Have you not put an edge, an edge? Have you not put an edge around him? An edge, wow. God can put an edge around you and me. Isn't that interesting? An edge around him and his household and everything he has. You have blessed the work of his hands. Ooh, amen to that. So that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But stretch out your hand and strike everything he has. And he will surely curse you to your face. Wow. That's a very interesting uh, dialogue between God Almighty and Satan. Okay. And the Lord said to Satan, very well then. Everything he has is in your hands. But on man himself do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. One day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby and the Sabians attacked and carried them off. They put the servants to the sword and I'm the only one who has escaped to tell you. Okay, that's the first disaster. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The fire of God fell from the sky. Burn up the sheep and the servants. And I'm the only one who has escaped to tell you. Now that's interesting. The fire of God. And this is what people do even nowadays. I know it's not my topic on this, but I just want to highlight because I never saw this before. Right? He was speaking. Right? He said, The fire of God. Now, is, is, is it God who caused this? No, 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 no. God didn't cause it. Right? God told Satan. The bad guy. Look, don't touch his life, but whatever other things, you know, you can mess around with that. All right. So all these catastrophes and disasters came from Satan. Okay. Yep. All right. So let's clarify that because even today people still talk. Anything happened to them? God. Good happened to them? God. Bad happened to them? Also God. They forget there is a bad guy out there. My goodness. Okay. Anyway. All right, and then uh, while he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chal Chal Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on your camels and carried them off. They put the servants to the sword. And I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, my goodness, yet another messenger came and said, Your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house when suddenly a mighty wind wept. Not wet, sorry. A mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them and they are dead. And I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. Interesting, are these the only guys who survive? At this job, got up, tore his robe, shaved his head, then fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Okay? Job's second test. On another day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them to present himself before him. And the Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered, From roaming around to the earth and going back and forth in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Wow, this is really, 
serious man. There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. Skin for skin, Satan replied. Wow. A man will give all he has for his own life. But stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely, surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, mm, Okay, very well then. He is in your hands, but you must spare his life. So you see, God is allowing this test on Job, but he's not the one causing it. That's a big difference. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the top of his head, guys. Painful, man. Then Job took a piece of broken pottery. Okay? A broken pottery. Imagine, imagine a glass, you know, a glass break it, you know. Broken pottery and scraped himself as he sat among ashes now this is the part that not many people talk about remember today's topic is husband and wife for those of you who are not married please don't rush choose carefully who you marry to very important if you are married what can you do <laughs> i don't know <laughs> well apply god's word to your marriage all right very important now this is chapter 2 Verse 9. So suddenly, Job's wife appears in the scene. Okay? Now, picture this. I appreciate if you guys don't make too much noise tearing papers while I'm recording this. Sorry, my ladies at home here are very busy. His wife said to him, this is verse 9 at chapter 2. Are you still holding on to your integrity? Wow, she is challenging her husband. Ladies, you can challenge your husband, but not in a negative way. Lah. Seriously. Okay, I mean, I married a very capable wife, right? But every time when she challenges me something on a negative sense, I get pissed off. Okay. His wife said to him, are you still holding on to your integrity? And the, the next part is really, really the one which got me. This is what he told Job. She told what she told Job, husband. Curse God. The wife tell Job, you still want to hold to your integrity? Why wow, are you so good, huh? Curse God. God bless you. God bless you, my darling. Okay? This is Job's wife talking. A wife. I don't know how old you see at this point in time. I'm not sure, but God bless you. Mm. Don't worry, guys. This video got special effects. It's a real uncensored truth. I told you. Okay. So back to the story. Okay. Bless you. Don't worry. She's not teasing me. She's just having a little cough. I don't know why. Suddenly, during this recording. His wife said to him, are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God. If that is not enough, she asked the husband to curse God. Now, you remember, remember this, this, this is the richest family in the East. Roch is, I mean, this guy is wealthy. With servants, with, you name it. They have kids. Kids are having a party, whining and dancing and enjoying themselves. So you can imagine this wife, she's having a damn good life. But because of those miseries, one by one by one by one, I think she lost it. She just lost it. Especially probably after losing the kids. So she went to the level to say, Are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God! And that is not enough, she said. Curse God and die. Wow. I don't know if you are a man and listening to this, how you feel, if this is your wife. I mean, you are suffering so much. Remember, the Bible says, 
he has to break a pottery, a porcelain pottery, you know, to scratch himself, all right? That's how bad he feels, how painful it is, right? An itch and pain or whatever it is, right? It says from the sole of the feet to the top of his head, you know, the whole body got it. And now the wife comes and said, Oh, so you still want to be that nice guy? Eh? You still want to hold on to your integrity? Curse God and die! That means I don't even want you anymore as a husband. You are, you, are, you are useless already. You better, but just die lah. But before you die, just curse God first. Now, going to the root of the problem. This is a typical wife that when a man is doing well, well, she is that wife. Oh, darling, so good. Oh, good. Wow, you made money. Oh, very good. Oh, you bought this. Oh, very good. Let's buy a bigger house. Oh, thank you so much. Very good. Oh, I love you. You know? Wow, oh, get, get a new car for the kid. Oh, our daughter is getting bigger. Uh, can I come, darling, darling, buy her a new car. Wow, when husband fulfills all the desires, husband is good. The moment something happens, when the husband starts to screw up, then the husband becomes, You are, uh, you are hopeless. Uh. Why you lost money? Why you lost your job? Why this? Why you lost the turning? Why you blind are you? And the worst part when they start to sigh. <sighs> well, when woman sigh, it's dangerous, man. I always remind my wife when she sighs. Why you sigh? Don't sigh. Because it becomes habit. Sigh. When a woman sighs, it's like telling the man you are an idiot or useless. Even when they don't say it. You see, now she's, she's laughing. <laughs> she's laughing. She's laughing at my teaching and my preaching. Okay? But it's important, you know, in this marriage or in... For those of you guys who are not married, you have to test your girlfriend. I think a couple of years ago, I was telling some young men, you know, this guy was so stressed up. You know, he came to my office, right, when I was working. I'm like, hey, dude, why are you so stressed? He said, I don't know to commit to marriage or not. I have this uh, fiancé, but he said, if I catch you, it's super demanding. And this guy comes from well-to-do family. She's very demanding. I, I don't know whether I can cope up or not. I don't know I can commit or not. I said, bro, you want to test her heart or not? I said, yes. I said, normally, how do you go and pick her up? He said, normally, I go and pick her up with my, you know, like, with my car. I said, what car do you drive? He said, I drive a BMW. I said, okay, I'll teach you one way. If you can do it, it will be great for you. He said, what? I said, create a story. Don't worry, you lie a bit. It's okay. God will forgive you one. He said, what? I said, very easy. One day, eh, he said, you go and borrow somebody's car. Maybe a very rundown car model. Because some of you are watching, don't know which part of the world. In Malaysia, we have one car which is, you know, can be quite rundown, one, eh, like Proton or whatever, you know. You know, I'm not putting down the brands or anything, I'm just saying, uh, some, I mean, let's call it a cheap car, uh, cheap car. Go and get a cheap car and go and fetch your, your darling, your girlfriend. And tell the story, said, hey, uh, I've been hiding this for a couple of months. Uh. Maybe you notice I've been a bit stressful recently. I'm just here to tell you, I literally lost everything. I have to drive this car now. I said, he said, are you serious? I said, I'm serious. I said, how can you marry someone? Before marriage, you're already so stressed because she's so demanding. You want to know her true heart? Test her like this. If you've been eating in very nice restaurants all the while, bring her by the roadside where it's dirty when the motorbike ta -ta 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 come down, splash some water, you know, and she gets dirty and see how she responds. You want to know her heart? Test her. You see, even God and Satan has to test Job to prove his righteousness. What's wrong you testing your girlfriend? What's wrong you testing before you commit, right? So you see, but there is a big problem here. Right? That's why I'm very thankful for my wife, Olivia. Yes, there were times we were doing well. There were times we were not doing so well. But she always stand by me. She always encouraged me no matter what. Even when I had a job, even when I had no job, when I had money, when I had no money. And we came to the level now, we are super blessed. I always say when I give my testimony, first glory to Jesus Christ changed my life. Second person, I thank God for my wife.
If not, I won't be here sharing. So this relationship thing is very important. And you see, one of the underlying factors in job story, I don't know why people don't talk about this part. I like to look at the root causes of the problem. One of the root causes of Job's problem is his wife. Because just trying to imagine, how can a wife come to that level? I know you can see your husband suffering, right or not? But can't you find another answer to comfort him? Another way to respond to his suffering? Instead of? Instead of? Instead of? What? Huh? What did she say? Let's go back again huh? to verse 9. His wife said to him, Are you still holding on to your integrity? Eh? Curse God and die. Okay, very quickly, let's look how Job is responding to her. Verse 10, he replied, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? At least the first part, good, he, he. He told her, you are foolish, idiot, stupid woman. You are talking like foolish woman. For the woman to come to this level, I think she was foolish from day one. But only now surfaced because of all the misery which happened recently, right? Uh, the, 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 all the animals died, la. finally the kids died, and now the husband is suffering, head to toe. Now she showed her true character. Imagine living with a wife like that all the days of your life. So it's true. This video is a warning. Very important who you marry to. Look for Proverb 31 woman. Yes, capable woman. So it's good. Right? Why? So you can do things together. Like I just finished a webinar just now. I was doing a marketing webinar uh, promoting our farming projects. At the back here, Olivia is taking care of all the logistics, people responses, people who are saying I'm interested. So we know each other's strength. Yeah? Sometimes I argue also during webinar, shouting at each other. It's okay, well, that's relationship. But we are truthful to each other. Good times, bad times. We still go through the storm together. Very important. No, like this woman, she's telling him, okay, you know what? Since you want to be the nice guy, yeah. Curse God and die. I don't want you anymore, in other words. What wife is that? A decent wife will tell the husband, even if, even if the doctor tells everyone in the family that, hey, I think uh, this man, right, he only has one week to go. What will the wife do? Come on, a decent wife. Of course you encourage the husband, right or not? Of course yeah, there are believers, no matter what, even if the husband knows he's going, she tell him what? Don't worry, darling. You know that we'll be forever together in heaven? You know, you always comfort someone in their suffering like this. Not like her. Curse God and die. Why you want to be the nice guy? Just curse God and die. That's why Job told her rightly. Huh? You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we ex accept good from God and not trouble? In other words, okay, we understand this part, you know, we are under the covenant of grace now. Of course, we are under covenant of grace. And we also understand the book of Job was like one of the oldest books of the Bible. Okay? I mean, poor Job has nothing to refer to, right? Like us, we have, we have the whole book, right? The whole 66 books of the Bible. We know Old Testament. We, knew, knew, we know New Testament. We all, we all know the different uh, covenants of the Bible. This fellow had nothing. So, of course, to him, good, bad, everything is from God. Of course, he's not aware of what's going on in the heavenlies up there, right? The, the dialogue between God and Satan. And then there is another truth, which is another topic, but never mind, we cover it here very quickly. Which is uh, another root cause of the problem of Job is what? In chapter 3, verse 25. Of course, you know, uh, the friends start to appear after that and all these things. The three friends... They all represent something, but that's not for this video. But I just want to highlight chapter 3, verse 25, which says, this is Job speaking, right? He said, what I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. Okay? 
So it's very important. You see, in our new covenant, thank God for the covenant of grace. The Bible says what? In the New Testament, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Of course, Job doesn't have all this truth back then. All right? He doesn't have all this truth. That's why we are so blessed. Right? So to him, even though he's like fearful towards God, but his fear was in the wrong direction. His fear, oh, yo, my kids are going to sing. My kids are going to sing. My kids are singing. They're having a party. They are drinking. Oh, yo, oh, yo, how, 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 how? So you see, everything that he feared happened to him. So you can be fear conscious, sin conscious. Guess what will happen? Those things will happen. Because that's where your focus is. Fear and faith cannot get married together. Right? Fear and faith cannot go together. So, finally, God answered it. I mean, sorry, Job answered it. What I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace. Blah, 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 blah. No rest, but only turmoil. All the things that happened to him, according to him, he already feared those things. My goodness, the Bible is so powerful, man. Every book is full of revelation. But back to the wife, all right? Because I don't know why I, I don't hear people talk about the wife. One part of Job's suffering, I think, in his life was the wife. Even though he was so rich and all this. <clears throat> you and I know many people out there. They are so, so, so rich. But they are not happy. They have no joy. Yeah? I just received a message uh, from a friend yeah, in a WhatsApp that uh, a particular couple, they're asking to separate suddenly. They have to let go of their super bikes and stuff like that. Why? Money problem. But I think the problem is even deeper than that between couples. <laughs> All right? So married life is no job. So choose your partner carefully. Okay? I know you might say, hey, yeah, Faiket, but this is job, lah. This is job. This is like how old is this book, man? It's the oldest book of the Bible based on the research and the scholars when they find out all this, you know. I know, I know. But it's relevant today. There are still wives out there today who behave just like this. Excuse me, trust me. So especially if we... I mean, I'm blessed. I married my woman here, Olivia, in 2003. How many years is that? Huh? Calculator. Calculator, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> huh? How to calculate? 2003. Now is? Now is 2021 minus 2003. Wow, 18 years, Adali. 18 years of marriage. Yes, we have our ups and downs, definitely. Do we quarrel? Yes. Every day, what? Just now she called my laptop, what? Because my laptop hanged halfway with me. I said, you and your bloody laptop. Ah. I mean, forgive us, we just sometimes we are too direct with each other. But we are real. That's why we are still together. We are still in love with each other. I mean, seriously speaking. So it's very important, the life partner. Okay, guys, watch who you marry. If you are married, very simple. Go back to God's word. There are so many truths here. I thank God for the man of God who guided us in our marriage as well. About the truth, about positioning, man, woman, and stuff like that. Some of the stories are in my book, Uncensored Truth About Money. Even though this book is mainly about money. Lah. But the man of God who blessed us and teaches the truth. So important. You shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. It comes and it relates to every area of life. Not just money. Relationships. Amen. So job story. This time I'm covering the wife part. His wife is a terrible woman. Alright? Terrible woman. So, 
what to do what to do what to do and by the way a lot of people have been using job story you know that you know when people suffer they always refer to job oh i'm a good person but you see i suffer la, like job also suffer what he said well one one reason we know he said i fear what happened i feared and what i feared happened right another reason i just gave you the wife is a big problem to him okay the wife is a big problem to him seriously and I heard from some preachers recently, okay, that, my friends, the sufferings of Job lasted about nine months. I know a lot of Christian friends out there suffer for more than nine years. Huh? Come on, man. Oh, man, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. A book of Job is very powerful. Anyway, let's end with a positive note. You know Job suffers so much and all this has to argue with his friends and stuff like that. End of the day, somehow he has to pray for his friend to get, to get healed. But this is the last part of the book, which is amazing. Eh? It is amazing. The Lord blessed the later part of Job's life more than the first. That's why God is a good God. God wants to bless you. I mean it. Not because I say it. It's everywhere in the Bible. And this is the last chapter, you know, chapter 42 from verse 12 onwards. Huh? The Lord blessed the later part of Job's life more than the first. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand donkeys and he also had seven sons and three daughters the first daughters he named jemima the second keziah and the third karen hapush however you pronounce it nowhere in all the land were there found women as beautiful as job's daughters and their father granted them an inheritance along with their brothers after this job lived 140 years he saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. And so he died old and full of years. All right. And of course, if you really read how many he had in the beginning and now, actually he's double. Okay. Double, you know. Double, 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 double. Seriously, double. He lost everything, right? God bless him double of what he lost him. Even wife, eh? Huh? <laughs> wife. Uh? Yeah, I also wondering. I also wondering in terms of wife how. Uh? Maybe wives. maintain the wife. Uh? Nice fellow. Oh, uh? nice, uh? Two wives. Uh, maybe two wives. I don't know. Uh? This part I don't know. No more. <laughs> I don't know this part. Okay. When we go to heaven, we ask Job. Uh? Job, what happened to your wife? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I tell you, man, I tell you. Amazing, huh? Amazing. But that's all I wanted to share. Well, quite long, huh? But I think it's, it's, it's important, it's important. There are some lessons to learn here, especially to the ladies out there. Okay? Always treat your men with respect. Love your men, for those of you who are married. If you're going to marry, same thing. Honor your men. Let him be the hero. La. It's, it's men's thing, it's men's ego. Let him feel good, la. All right? If you want him to be, you know, look at you, faithful to you, you cannot run from that one. So because... Laptop is very smart. <laughs> huh? My laptop is very smart. Or because just now she said bloody laptop, now she said my laptop very good. <laughs> my wife joker. La. That's us, la. one minute argue, now, now laugh. Huh? La later at night, cannot tell you what we do. Huh? Okay, censored. So... <laughs> oh, my daughter also here. It's okay, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's okay. This is the whole world here. Whoever is going to watch this. Huh? So guys, be blessed. Be blessed. All right. I just want to share this part because literally speaking, I mean, I'm telling you honestly that forever videos I've heard or preaching some teachings on Job, everyone talk about the suffering, talk about the blessing, this and that, uh, his friends, how Job responded, this and that. Uh, but people don't talk about the wife. And to me, that's a very important part of his life. Very important part. All right. 
And uh, but somehow I think I think I know the answer, lah, darling. I think God spared her. I think God spared her. All right. I think God spared her. Really? Also to teach her a lesson. Yeah. Imagine how she'll feel, right? After all this suffering and all this, right? Uh, Job is healed. Job pray for his friends to be healed. Now got children again. You know, children, ah, children with a wife, ah, You know, yeah. I think God spare her. God spare her. I think because Job really loves her, lah. Okay, yeah. So be blessed, guys. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Share if you are blessed. Uh, click the bell button thingy if you want to see notifications for the next video. But I mean, I share the story. I also, I'm blessed myself by sharing, lah. So God bless you all. This is Fai Cat Luari speaking, and uh, yep. Have a fantastic, blessed, married life. Amen? Bye-bye.